the two biggest chains in Canada will not be merging after all. The owners of the National Post and the Toronto Star say they could not come to terms. Jeannie Lee is here with more on all of this. Jeannie, how did the two companies explain this? Uh, not Nothing really beyond uh, what we just said, which is that they just couldn't come to an agreement. But we knew from the start, and it intimated, that the companies intimated that, um, you know, there were a lot of issues to have to work out, and there was never any guarantee that there would be an actual agreement. So here are some of the very tough and sticky terms that had to be uh, clear before any announcement could be made that there would be a merger. And now that there won't be a merger, these are the issues that they had to overcome. Number one, debt. Uh, Post Media had $288 million in debt after several rounds of heavy borrowing and restructuring over the years. And in fact, recently it's been borrowing money just to pay the interest on that debt. So uh, this also underlines why a merger was needed. Now, creditors had to agree to a lot of terms, such as would they, for example, take um, a, a, a slice of the combined company in exchange for forgiving the debt. So a lot of terms to work out there. Then there's the issue of concentration. Remember that North Star, which is the owner of Toronto Star and Metroland and um, other uh, assets, has about 70 papers across Canada. You consider then that Post Media uh, had about, um, I think, more than 130 because it had bought, it's hard to keep track because it, it keeps buying properties. It bought Sun Media in 2015 and the Can West chain of papers back in 2010, including papers such as the Montreal Gazette. So a merger would have found some regions covered by newspapers that belong to the same owner. Um, so that means that uh, they would have had to likely eliminate um, one of the publications and a lot of jobs and sources of local news, all very contentious issues. Jeannie, this potential merger, it was instantly controversial. Mm. So how much of a factor was that in ending these discussions? Well, it's one thing to be controversial among readers and communities, but of course, it all ultimately has to uh, pass the smell test at the Competition Bureau and uh, the whole regulatory environment. Uh, obviously, uh, the parties felt that they probably wouldn't be able to pass that, uh, as well as these financial hurdles. So financial and regulatory, those are the big ones. And um, the fact is, though, they do have to do something. We know that they Traditional media have been under the gun uh, with uh, the rise of uh, online news and the fact that uh, both eyeballs of readers and advertising dollars from advertisers have been migrating online, making it very hard to uh, for the traditional media, who have been trying progressively to uh, do more work online, but also facing this huge problem currently that the big tech media, uh, media out there, the Googles of the world, the Facebooks of the world, do not pay the cost of gathering news and making news, but will take that news and, and put it on, uh, on their websites. And certainly that has been an issue recently. And something that is, uh, was refer referenced in, the, in this announcement that there would be no deal, the CEO and president of uh, Post Media had this to say, a part of what he had to say. The need for creative solutions mm -hmm. and found, found, uh, foundational transformation in our industry remains, so referring to the fact that something has to give here. By leveling the playing field with the tech giants and creating a healthy ecosystem, we can ensure that the media industry and journalism remain vibrant, diverse, and resilient in Canada. So again, another little reminder for uh, the CRTC, for uh, the regulators and the government as well, uh, that um, there's uh, something that uh, can be done on their parts, they, uh, the newspaper industry feels, to ensure their survivability.